Having a paint booth in your shop is one of those great uh, tools to have. Um, you know, exposing yourself to uh, paint fumes or the paint mist, uh, that sort of thing, uh, certainly is not good for your lungs. And speaking from many years of experience working in, a, in industrial environments my entire life and smoking, uh, you do certainly want to take care of your lungs, especially as you get older. It all catches up to you. Now, this particular paint booth, Honestly, I can't remember when I bought it. Um, I'm going to guess I've had it for about 10 years. Uh, honestly, I just don't know anymore. Uh, and it served me pretty well, uh, but it, it's not ideal. And there's certainly some issues with it. Uh, one, the plastic. I've got a few places where it's starting to crack now. Um, two, it's it was okay for the original purpose that I bought it for, and that was for painting uh, little plastic model cars. Uh, one of my other passions in life. Uh, you know, so for that size object, it was great. But more recently, some of my projects have gotten bigger. If you watch our electronics section on this channel, uh, we recently did uh, a fairly large uh, internet radio uh, uh, enclosure. I couldn't paint that in here. It was very, very difficult. I kept bumping the sides. Uh, it, it was a problem. So uh, that became an issue. Uh, the other thing, besides being too small, uh, the one thing suffering on this particular unit, it simply does not have enough draw. The uh, sticker claims that it puts out, I think, 114 CFM of draw and vents it out. Um, that might be free-flowing air through the fan, but it's certainly not the draw coming through here. Uh, it, can, it cannot keep up with this very simple, small airbrush. This is a detail airbrush. So uh, no matter how slow I try to go, it seems like I was always breathing in fumes. Uh, the filters that are in here, uh, you can't just go to a local store and buy. Um, and I kind of wanted something that would be easily replaceable. Um, so I'm going to opt for the larger furnace filter, the pleated type. I'll show you that a little bit later. Um, another thing that was really bad <laughs> with this design, I, I didn't really uh, notice it until after using it for a while, is the lighting. Uh, you really have a hard time seeing what you're painting. And uh, trying to work with clamp-on lights in the background to shine in here has never worked out very good. In fact, I've got one over here and one over here uh, to try and give more light in there. Uh, so on the new booth, I want to try to incorporate some internal lighting to, to help with, with that issue. Um, the inside areas have always been a dark gray or a semi-translucent plastic. Uh, but again, it's dark gray. Uh, it, it's like the black hole of light. It just draws all the light away from the object that you're painting, and you simply can't see it very well. So it's hard to paint it accurately. Um, another problem with this one, and it was very ingeniously uh, designed, and once I find it again, is the exhaust hose. Uh, the exhaust hose for this uh, simply hooks on the back flange here, or on the flange and an exhaust port, and this cleverly designed output chute uh, goes out the window, you close the window down on top of it. Uh, all around it's very clever, very nice design, but in order to use this I have to lose about a foot to a little, maybe a foot, foot and a half of space that I got to pull the, the paint cart out away from the wall. Well, in this small shop, a foot and a half is a lot of space for me. So there's a lot of wasted space with it, regardless if it's cleverly designed. Uh, the other problem with it that I believe, it's also a, a restrictor of airflow. I already mentioned that it's a 114 CFM fan on here blowing out the back. It's got to draw air through a filter at the front and then route it through two elbow bends on this thing to get from the back of the booth out the window. And that's going to greatly restrict airflow. So this is going by the wayside and so is the paint booth. We're going to swap this stuff out, build something bigger and better. 
Now, uh, there's one more thing that uh, on the new design I haven't tackled yet, and I honestly don't think it's that difficult. Uh, but what would happen here uh, on windy days, if the wind is coming out of the southeast at all, we would get a high pressure on this area of the wall. If we got a high pressure air there and it wants to blow in through that hose back up through here, it blows all the way through and of course it blows the dust off the filter, any of the loose dust, right onto the thing you just painted. It's been very frustrating. It's destroyed a number of paint jobs for me over the years. So I need to address that issue as well. Some way of dealing with that back pressure to prevent it from uh, overtaking the fans and blowing stuff backwards through the paint booth. So those are some of the complaints that I have about this. Now I'll take you uh, to a design concept sketch of what the new paint booth is and uh, go over what we're going to do and uh, the materials we're going to use and so forth. Now before we get into that though, there's one last thing I'd like to point out and that is the size difference between the two paint booths. I mentioned that this one is too small. I don't want to go too big. Again, I don't have a lot of room in this workshop. So I've selected this as the size of the new paint booth. Uh, it's about four or five inches taller, almost uh, 10 inches wider. Uh, so that should accommodate any of the size objects that I've been painting recently that wouldn't fit in this, this particular paint booth. Now starting out with the design, I've selected MDF. Uh, medium density fiberboard. Uh, that's that product that's very similar to particle board, uh, but it's using finer granules. Uh, it takes paint pretty good as long as you seal it first. Uh, while it is heavy, it is certainly uh, much more durable than the paint booth that I've got now. Uh, so that'll be the main uh, construction material. In the uh, corners, uh, in this uh, view of the paint booth, you'll see what I believe will be uh, the interior lighting. These will be LED uh, lights that uh, we'll be making in another project associated with this paint booth. Uh, we've got a very large opening, uh, nothing fancy there, purely function. As we spin this around, we'll look at the back of the paint booth, and I'm going for a 3D printed uh, output, uh, flange or port, however you want to say it. Uh, these are actually two of them back to back. One piece will bolt up against the back of the paint booth. The other piece will bolt up to a large panel that will fit in the window. And then these two pieces can telescope into each other for a distance of about three inches. But it's a full wide open port to the outside of the building and that should allow for the freest flow of air from all four of these fans. Now these fans are rated at about 140, 150 CFM each. So this booth will certainly draw a lot of air. And then finally, um, as we look at a cutaway of this, you can see how the air filters uh, are located in there. They'll simply be held in place with uh, uh, some little cleats with magnets to just hold them in place. And then uh, as I remove that from the view and remove the side panel, you can see how the uh, area back there has a plenum. Uh, you don't want the fans right up against the filter. You're only drawing air through that round spot on the filter. So you put a, 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 a plenum in there, a chamber that allows the air to flow and draw through the whole filter. Uh, so that's how this is set up. That plenum I think is only about three or four inches deep. I didn't want to make it too deep because then that just wastes more space uh, on the paint booth itself. But again, it's all designed to allow for very good free flowing air from through the filter with a very large filter and then to the exterior of the facility. Okay, I've got most of the bits and pieces here uh, to start construction on the paint booth. As you can see, here's the MDF. I purchased half inch by two feet by four feet uh, at the local Home Depot. They call it uh, call them handy panels, and they truly are. They're much easier to handle uh, and a lot easier on your back moving it around as opposed to a four foot by eight foot sheet. So we'll be cutting that up. 
I've already got the fans um, each. I bought pairs of them. So there's two fans in the kit along with a speed controller. That's a very cool feature that I've never had on a paint booth. So that can certainly help uh, from overdrafting, drawing too much paint away from the gun or away from the, the subject and drawing it out the filter if you got too much flow. So you can tune it really to your situation and even to the paint gun. And I've got uh, the pleated filters. And basic furnace filters, they're pleated. They're not the fiberglass type. Um, I've seen this style used in other paint booths and it seems to be uh, quite effective. Uh, remember, we're not filtering the air. We're really trying to capture most of this stuff as a filter to vent outside. So if we don't get 100% of it, it'll pass through and go to the exterior. Um, and these are relatively inexpensive. I think uh, this size was $4.50 each, so less than 10 bucks for two filters, and they'll probably last me, you know, a half a year, a year, whatever it is. Uh, it's irrelevant. It's, it's for my health, so I think I'm worth it. So with that, I'm going to dive in. We'll start cutting up the material, and then we can work right into assembly of the MDF panels. To cut all these panels to size, table saw is certainly the most efficient tool for the process. Now, of course, you can use many other handheld tools, such as a jigsaw, circular saw, or even a bandsaw. Not necessarily a handheld one, but a bandsaw. Uh, there are a variety of tools. Use what you got. That's what I do. I've got a table saw. It's a great one, so that's the one or the tool that I choose. After getting all the parts cut to their basic square shapes, next thing we got to do is pay attention to a couple of other cuts uh, on a center uh, support that goes uh, behind the filters. We got two little notches to cut out here. Bandsaw, perfect tool to do that. Of course, then again, if you got a jigsaw, use that. The two side pieces have this tapered back edge, and realistically, uh, again, any tool will work. Table saw, if I had a tapering jig handy, I could have used that. Uh, I could have used a jig saw, could have used a handheld circular saw, a circular saw with a clamped on uh, guide so that it would cut perfectly straight. Same thing with a jig saw, you can use a straight edge to help guide the tool along. Or you can freehand it over here at the bandsaw. And again, that's the tool that I've got available to me. It's fast and efficient, so I can cut right through this and move on to the next steps. One of the great things about being a maker and having been a maker for uh, the vast majority of my life, I've uh, collected a fair number of tools, and just about every operation I can choose which one would be the most efficient. And frankly, that's what I'll often do, is select what's most efficient to use and uh, the most accurate. Now here, I've got to cut these four holes uh, on the back of the uh, paint booth. This is where the fans would exhaust. Now I could use a drill a hole, a starter hole, use a jigsaw, or I could use my CNC router. Decisions, decisions, decisions. Well, as you can see, I decided to use the CNC router. I'm typing up a program. Uh, this takes just a few minutes. These are very simple programs, four circles to cut. I'll be uh, going at about a quarter inch depth of cut uh, for each pass, so two circles for uh, each hole. Um, that'll cut through. I've got my workpiece clamped directly to my aluminum table, so I won't go all the way through, so I'll have to knock the, whole, the circles out after I'm done. But again, it's the most accurate tool I've got and certainly the most efficient to create a nice looking round hole exactly where I need it. Got the back panel off the CNC router. Uh, holes all measured up uh, the size that I cut them. Um, got everything uh, straight relative to the edge of the board and so forth. 
And then what I've done is I've taken this straight edge clamp and I've lined it up with these holes so that when I put the fan on there, it's centrally located over the hole that I machined. And the purpose of the straight edge is so I don't get some of them at an angle all cattywampus like that, so that when they're all on there, the edges will all be perfectly in a straight line. So it's a little more complicated, but you're going to get a more attractive and functioning piece when you're done. Now to mark the locations, I'm using what's called a transfer punch. You can buy these sets, uh, Amazon, everywhere. Uh, I, I think I bought these for around $20 for the whole set. Uh, but they work very nice. You select a size that's very close to the size of the hole. You drop it through there. After you got it perfectly aligned, you give it a tap. And then you can mark all four hole locations step by step through the whole process. Of course, if you don't have a drill press, don't let that stop you. You can easily do this with a hand drill. For assembly, it's going to be wood glue and a few brads to help hold things in place until the glue takes hold. You may be wondering why I'm applying glue to both pieces. MDF is very porous. It soaks up moisture like crazy. So I'm applying glue to the edges and to the faces where these pieces glue together so that one side or the other isn't starved of glue as the moisture is wicked into the wood. Just something to help increase the strength of the bond. Even though this isn't structural, I still want it to last for more than a couple of days. Now what I'll do, I got a shim here, I'm going to line up the edge very carefully and send a brad or two into it to hold it in place. Glue squeeze outs easy to clean up with a little spatula, putty knife, something that's sharp, and you can drag along the edge like I'm doing here. This happens to be a six inch machinist scale, but uh, considering I've probably been doing that with this scale for the last I don't know, 20, 30 years, and it's perfectly fine. I got no trouble using it now. Rather than lay out where these cleats go that support or keep the filters off of the back panel, rather than lay that out, I'm just cut two, three inch blocks of wood that I will use as stops. Now, I just push the board up against that, push it down, make sure everything's flush, and we'll let that glue take hold, and I'll build my way up along the sides and then the center one. And then I'll put the top on. Now with all the cleats installed, we can put the top on. Now, if you don't have a brad or pin nailer, you really don't need one for this construction. 
The brads or pin nails, in this case, are just holding things in substitute of clamping them. Uh, they really don't add a whole lot of strength to the joint. Uh, they're just, like I say, they're there for uh, acting as a clamp till the glue takes hold, and that'll be your primary uh, source or primary uh, device for holding everything together. Uh, this product, uh, Bullseye Shellac, is one that I've used in the past. It's worked well. I also believe they got one specifically for use as a primer uh, before painting. Uh, so look for that kind of a product. But nonetheless, these shellacs really do a great job of sucking into the porous um, MDF and really sealing it good. Application is simple. You can use a brush, uh, either a bristle, foam, or uh, a roller. I applied a total of two coats with a light sanding with 320 grit in between each coat, making sure that I've got 100% coverage with both coats. With the second coat of sealer dried on here, and before I sand it up, I wanted to take care of the retainer system I came up with for these filters. Now at this point, I really don't know if I'm using just two of these or three. I might even be able to get away with just one. I, just, I don't know at this time what will work. Um, so I really can't put a mechanical fastener in here, and I really don't want to, like a screw, you know, a bracket uh, up against a screw or something of that effect. Um, so what I decided to do, I came up with the idea that I could use um, a couple of neodymium magnets inside the walls of the paint booth, and then on a mating piece, have a matching neodymium magnet. And then that way you could take that cleat or that block, angle, whatever I come up with for it, to hold against the filters. We don't really need to hold them from coming this way other than just the slightest effect of it falling down. I mean, there's nothing to force them out at you. Um, they get sucked in when the booth is in operation. So I don't need a, a super secure uh, means of holding the, the filters in. Um, but these magnet systems are really nice because you can just grab a hold of whatever it is, slide it out, pop in the new filter, slide the new one in, no tools, no fuss, no muss. So to do that, I laid out a couple of holes. I'm using half-inch neodymiums. And uh, so I laid out a location that I thought was good. Um, I used a half-inch diameter uh, Forstner drill bit uh, to drill into the side walls. And I'm going just a little bit deeper th than the thickness of the magnet, maybe a 64th or a 32nd of an inch, which would be about a half a millimeter. And then I'm going to glue that in with uh, the thick or medium viscosity cyanoacrylate glue, along with some uh, accelerator to help everything uh, uh, hold these magnets in place. After that's all cured up good, I'm going to give it a finished sanding and then we're going to move on to uh, painting it a gloss white. For color, I've opted to try this particular product. Um, it's a high gloss white and that's really what I wanted was a high gloss white uh, for the paint booth. Uh, this is 100% uh, acrylic. And I've never used that type of paint before. Uh, so I thought, what the heck, let's give it a try. Um, I've done a few test samples with it. It's a very thick paint, very, very thick. Um, and I found that if I rolled it out with uh, these white uh, foam rollers, it worked out pretty good. It doesn't give me a smooth, glassy surface. It gave me kind of a textured surface. And I was fine with that. But nonetheless, I applied two coats of paint, uh, allowing proper drying time in between. With the paint dry, it's been drying for about 24 hours, I'm going to turn my attention to some of the mechanical assembly, uh, primarily because I really want to test out these fans and how well they draw. Um, but I'm going to turn my attention to assembly. We're going to get the fans mounted up. I'm going to also mount up the port that goes around these fans to help direct the air to the outside of the shop. And that will be passing through a window. Now, the way this will work, uh, here is the port that I 3D printed. 
And uh, of course, this could be fabricated a number of ways. Uh, you could use wood, uh, quarter inch uh, plywood, quarter inch hardboard, uh, plastics, uh, just a variety of materials. 3D printing is just the very easy way to do it. Um, but the way this will work, there will be a board that gets put into the window area. It's a double hung window, so you lift it up, put the board in there, close the window on top of it, and that holds that board in place. And that'll be sized to the window opening, so it's somewhat sealed. Then this port will pass through that board, but to help make sure that um, it's a little bit more compliant, meaning that I might not be able to get this always the perfect distance to that board, on that board will be another port just like this, slightly larger. This one will slide into that one. And that way it'll be fairly well sealed all the way around and the exhaust air will go out and stay out rather than leaking through the sides. Uh, perhaps a little overkill, but I'm trying to do it better than what I had before. The other thing nice about this system, all the fans uh, exhaust directly out. Uh, there's nothing to impede that airflow from here to the outside environment. So I need to fit this up after I get the fans put in place. Uh, each fan has a power cord comes out, and I've made allowances for that. Take this back off. Apparently they're pretty durable. <laughs> here is the power supply. Now this kit, uh, fan kit comes with a power supply and speed control, and it comes in pairs. So you get two fans and this speed control, uh, and then you buy two sets. And I think, I'm going to say it all told it was around $80 with tax. So that's a pretty decent uh, uh, value. Um, considering the amount of CFM that we're going to move through here. Uh, the other thing I wanted to point out, um, the cable uh, will daisy chain like so. This will plug into one fan. This one will plug into the other fan. And then the speed controls, I'm, I don't have that figured out yet, but they're most probably going to mount up here on the top of the cabinet. You're looking at it somewhat up the, upside down. This is the top. That's the bottom, and of course, this is the back. So I'll mount the uh, variable speed controls up here at the top facing forward. All right, for a quick test, got all four fans mounted and running right now. And here are the two filters, and what I'm going to do is place one filter in the uh, paint booth, and then I'll add another filter, and I'm going to monitor how much that affects our uh, high-tech flow meter over here. And uh, hopefully it'll stay inflated. We'll see. Okay, that's with one filter. You can definitely see a change in airflow. Yep. All right, now we'll put the second filter in front. Further... Uh, change in airflow, but not real bad. And considering the fan is running at its lowest speed right now, I don't think we have too much to worry about. So what we'll do... We've got a substantial amount of air flowing through, and as you can see here, Now, I'm just going to guess that this would be about a cubic feet, a cubic foot, rather. And as you can see, that fills up probably less than a second. So we've got excellent airflow coming through, uh, very well unrestricted by the filters. The filter area should be adequate for what we're trying to do. Now, I'll try to gauge if I can feel a draft up front. It's not excessive, but you can definitely feel the draft up front. So I think we're right in the right ballpark for filter size, number of filters, number of fans, and the CFM. Lucky guess. Well, back here I'm testing out my uh, cleat to help hold the, f the filters in place when the booth isn't running. And uh, I designed this up at about 4.30 this morning after I crawled out of bed. 
obviously I messed up because I can get my fingers back by here, uh, so I'm off by a half inch here, and I got to be off by an inch on this magnet location. So I, I think I got to return to the drawing board. Uh, but as you can see, the design itself is quite simple, just a couple of magnets that will hold it in place. And it's nothing more than a 3D printed piece of angle plastic with two pockets in it to hold the uh, magnets. Now once I get everything dimensioned correctly and uh, in the right place, we should have uh, a nice little bracket to hold that and uh, hold the filters up and not let them fall out or fall down when the fan turns off. Now using some flanged screws, I'm going to go ahead and mount up my exhaust snorkel. Now let me take you through how I made the window panel. It started out half inch MDF like the rest of the paint booth. I cut it to size to fit the window opening width and then height. I just kind of estimated where I needed to be above this area on the paint booth cart. Cut that to shape, put a couple rabbits on either side so that when it fits in the window, it can't fall through. Uh, just makes it a little easier to put in there when you're working alone and so forth. Uh, from there, I moved the cart over to uh, the window panel while it was in the window, traced around this to transfer its position onto the back of the window panel. From there, that helped me to cut out the opening in it. And while all that was going on, I was 3D printing a mating snorkel that would go over the top of this one so that they could telescope against each other, like such. It's not a super tight fit. There's probably, uh, we'll say, 3 sixteenths of an inch of clearance around it, which is 180 thousandths, which should be, I think, 4 or 5 millimeters, somewhere in there. Uh, but that gives you all the clearances, uh, so you don't have to be perfectly lined up when you try to drive the cart up to uh, the window. Uh, so, and then finishing was the same treatment, uh, shellac, two coats of shellac sanding in between, and then the uh, white glossy paint. From there, I uh, found the, the scrap metal, or the scrap polystyrene, up on the shelf. I was looking around for something else this morning, and I found this uh, polystyrene. I use this uh, for a number of the panels on our robot project, which is elsewhere on this YouTube channel. Now, I use two different types or two different sizes. Uh, this is 180 thousandths thick, again, 3 sixteenths or about 4 millimeters. And then uh, some thin stuff, which is the actual flapper. And that is 30 thousandths of an inch or 1 32nd of an inch or about 0.7 millimeters, somewhere in there. Uh, but I had this left over, it was free, it was in my scrap pile, and uh, as soon as I saw it, I knew how to come up with a solution to prevent the wind from blowing back into the paint booth and contaminating a fresh, fresh paint job. Construction, uh, no plans, no diagrams, no sketching. Literally, I just kind of eyeballed everything. I cut some strips that are uh, half of an inch wide, cut those on the table saw, laid them out against this hole, and then uh, figured out the width and height based on that, cut the pieces to length, got the lower pieces attached to the window frame, which then helped uh, for the placement of the fixed uh, piece that'll hold the fixed portion of the hinge onto the back, and uh, with that I was able to drill all the pieces, uh, put chamfers on some of the holes so that the screws would sit flush. Um, then I uh, cut the thin piece of PVC using a sharp utility knife. Uh, that was very easy to do, it's very thin, very sharp knife, and uh, made quick work of it. 
then as a stiffener and a way to help uh, support it while it's mounted to the hinges, I super glued uh, that panel to the uh, another piece of that thick uh, PVC or styrene and uh, that was how I was going to mount it to the hinges. So I needed a little stiffener there because just mounting that thin stuff to the hinge would have never worked out. So after going through, I got it all mounted up, uh, lining up the hinges one by one as I went along. And uh, I still need to do a little bit of alignment on them. But uh, nonetheless, the whole system is, again, very compact, very small. Uh, doesn't take up a lot of space, and uh, I think it's going to be quite simple. Once, once I get the hinges lined up, it's a flapper door, nothing to it. So right now I'm pretty happy with it. Once I try it out, make sure it works good, then I'll know for sure. Now we're going to turn our attention to uh, seeing if we can tidy up this uh, bundle of wires, so to speak. And what I want are for the two controllers to be right in the center front of my paint booth. So I've come up with this enclosure. Uh, I can mount these two controllers inside here using some M3 by uh, 12 millimeter screws. And then I'll mount this onto here with some sheet metal screws. And now to tidy up the cables back here. For that, there's some nice little slots here for wire ties. Now I'm just going to route my power so that it exits over here on the right side and it really won't matter bottom or the side but getting it over here is a good place for it and then all this slack can get bundled up in these wire ties Now, as mentioned, I wanted to add some lighting to this paint booth. I've already got one of the lights mounted here. The other one will go up in this corner. I just transferred the whole locations to the top of the paint booth, uh, like so, and then drilled through holes for the wire and then the two mounting screws, which are, I believe, M4 screws. Now, the construction and how to make uh, these lights is in another video, and that'll be in our electronics section, and of course I'll provide a link on the information page. So I'm going to get this one mounted up, and then we'll go ahead and mount up the, the wires in the controller in a similar fashion like we did with the fan controllers. Well, I just finished the paint booth and I'm really pleased with it. As you can see, the lighting in it is exceptional. Uh, I don't know if the microphone's picking it up or not, but the, the uh, venting, the air fans aren't that loud. Uh, certainly, I can play the radio and be painting all day and I'd be very comfortable around that. The fans got an excellent draft all around that whole filter surface, so I think 
uh, having the fans in a line was not really a problem as it seems to be drafting everywhere. Uh, of course, they are variable speed, so you got control, and the lighting is adjustable as well. All around, it's a pretty good winner of a project. Now, the last detail that I had done, uh, we went through, I decided to use a clear contact paper. Actually, it's frosted, I think, is what they called it. It was the only clear type that I could find at the hardware store. Uh, it seems to be a low tack, and I cut out pieces to fit over the lenses of the LED lighting uh, along the top, sides, and bottom. And that way, when it gets all dark and nasty from painting a bunch of great projects, I can peel off this contact paper, put on new contact paper, and I've got a nice bright white paint booth again. Really looking forward to that situation. Filters, very easy to change. These little magnetic uh, holders works out really well. Um, as mentioned uh, earlier, the lighting is a separate project in our electronics robotics section of the website or of the YouTube channel. And we go through the full process of how to 3D print it, uh, how to create the circuit board, uh, mill the, the lenses, the whole nine yards. So you'll be able to completely build up your own uh, LED lighting to suit your needs as well. Uh, all the plans for everything uh, and all the information will be in the associated uh, web page for this. Uh, the link for that will be in the description below. So hopefully uh, this will spawn the Bob Ross in me or maybe the Rat Fink and I can become an artist of my own. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Hopefully it picked up some pointers so that you can build your own paint booth. Thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.